Briz asks, Bitcoin network uptime is quoted as 99.984%. Please tell us about the other 0.016%. I've read about technicals of the two downtime events in 2010 and 2013, and I'm curious what you know about the fundamental aspects of these events, and how the community reacted or overreacted. Also, I've read that the alert system was removed in 2016. How would an emergency situation be handled now? Um, that's the question from um, from Briz. So uh, let's talk about uh, exactly what happened in those two events. The first downtime event was in 2010, and it was an event where there was a vulnerability discovered in uh, Bitcoin. It's actually um, CV 2010-5139, as you can see, uh, someone helpfully provided uh, the information in the question. And basically, what happened there was someone exploited vulnerability, which was a value uh, overflow or underflow uh, vulnerability, which allowed them to basically produce um, 184 billion Bitcoin. <laughs> as the coinbase transaction of one of the blocks and uh, of course you know the reward was supposed to be um, just 50 bitcoin at the time per block and instead it was 184 billion so just slightly over and that event basically was a, a real classic software vulnerability within bitcoin uh, in fact, that's fairly rare. We haven't really seen this kind of systemic vulnerability. So um, that caused an emergency response. Uh, the consensus of the network uh, was that uh, this was an invalid block uh, because consensus rules that everyone thought they had agreed to um, did not allow for such an event to happen, even if the software implementation uh, misapplied those rules and did allow for that to happen. And so as a result, um, a patch was issued, people upgraded their software. That block was reversed because the software recognized it as invalid um, and a chain reorganization occurred. It took about six, six and a half hours for the uh, new software release to happen, people to um, upgrade their nodes and mining nodes and um, for that block to be reorganized and all of the transactions except of course for the 184 billion bitcoin transaction to be replayed um, the second incident and i did not witness this incident because uh, this was before i got involved uh, in bitcoin i didn't know anything about this i just read about it afterwards the second incident, however, I did witness, um, and it was really quite fascinating. Second incident happened um, in uh, 2013, and that was more specifically um, a problem in the implementation of the underlying database during a software upgrade. So. Um, what went wrong there was, at the time, Bitcoin software, specifically Bitcoin Core software, was running the 0.7 version of the software. And the underlying database of blocks and transactions was stored in Berkeley DB, uh, which is a type of database. So that was for the storage. Now, um, the underlying software, uh, Berkeley DB, um, had an unfortunate bug in it in that it could not open more than 1,024 um, file descriptors. In the process of upgrading uh, the database uh, in version 0.8 of the Bitcoin client that was released, uh, and I believe this happened in April of 2013 or something like that, um, version 0.8 uh, changed the database the underlying database to level DB. Now, until that moment in time, the database infrastructure of Bitcoin Core was considered non-consensus, meaning that changes to the database shouldn't affect consensus because um, the consensus code it does not uh, 
does not uh, consider the database relevant. It's, uh, it's simply something that is invisible to the consensus rules or should be invisible to the consensus rules. In this particular case, what happened effectively was an abstraction layer violation, where the abstraction of the database um, wasn't effective in shielding the consensus rules from an unfortunate bug in the underlying database. During the upgrade to 0.8, uh, one of the miners that had upgraded to 0.8 created a block that had more than 1,024 transactions, and that block was perfectly handled by the level DB database and the implementation of Bitcoin of 0.8 version that was running that. Um, but unfortunately, any 0.7 client that encountered this block when it was broadcast on the network choked. And what I mean by choked is in, in the process of trying to verify this block, um, the system attempted to open 1024 and then 1025 file descriptors and um, crashed Bitcoin Core. And Bitcoin Core 07 clients started crashing. Now, in this particular case, what would happen is they would crash, reboot, uh, and upon starting up, they would contact the network and say, "You got any new blocks?" And they'd receive the same block that at this point had already become part of the uh, blockchain and try to verify it and crash again and then reboot and crash again and reboot and crash again. Every time they get presented with this block, they choke. It was decided at that point to roll back 0.8. And who makes that decision? That's a really critical question. So um, alerts went out in a variety of ways. Some of them used the built-in Bitcoin alert system that existed then, where people could issue a message signed by a, hand, a, handhold, a handful sorry, of digital keys that were available to some participants in the development process to be able to notify people of some emergency situation. This was introduced by uh, Satoshi in the original client or in the early stages, if I uh, remember correctly. And the purpose of this was when there were very few communication channels for Bitcoin, to have a way to reach all node operators with an emergency alert by sending it over the very same P2P network as Bitcoin. However, um, there are some significant challenges and risks with such an approach, and it was deprecated in 2016 because at this point there are many, many, many communication channels by which uh, node operators as well as miners can communicate and do communicate in emergencies. In this case, um, I actually did not receive the alert uh, about this, but what I noticed. Um, was that my node was misbehaving because I was actually doing some work at the time, and I started reading uh, online that um, uh, blocks were being delayed. So block times went up to almost 20 minutes because half the hash power of the network, which was running still 0.7, kept crashing. So effectively, the hash rate dropped. Um, dramatically, because only the 0.8 clients were able to continue, and as a result, uh, blocks were coming out more slowly. I immediately went on to the uh, Bitcoin Developers IRC. I got contacted by a number of exchanges and others who were trying to figure out what was going on. I put them in touch with some of the core developers they didn't know at the time. I made some introductions, um, and you know, I wasn't in a position to help beyond that. So. I just raised the alarm with a few people that I knew, and um, and then watched. And what happened next was really interesting because very quickly uh, consensus was arrived at. Um, again, about six hours later, a new version um, was released that basically rolled back the chain um, by reorganizing it around the 0.7 clients. No transactions were lost. No no double spends occurred. Uh, but effectively, what happened was. Uh, everybody who was running a 0.8 client uh, turned it off, um, and 0.7 clients continued the chain, and then that upgrade was postponed. It led to a 26 block divergence at the time, uh, and a 26 block reorganization. And you can actually see that um, in a, there's a, a few websites that have snapshots of what was happening at the time. Anyway, uh, so those are the two events. That's the 0.016 um, downtime of the Bitcoin network.
In both cases, no money was lost except for the $184 billion that were created in 2010, which of course were not real. Um, because the understanding that everyone had the consensus rules was violated. It's an interesting concept of what happens when uh, people think they know what the consensus rules are or how they will be applied, and then they're applied differently. Um, it's not that different from what happened with the DAO hack uh, in Ethereum much later. The big difference, of course, is that this was in the core software of Bitcoin, and in fact, in the, one of the most critical components of the core software in 2010, which was the issuance of new currency and checking that uh, currency is issued at the correct schedule, uh, whereas the DAO hack was a separate smart contract that only affected a small part of the network. But very similar kind of response by the, the community. Um, and then in 2013, um, it was the realization that unanticipated bugs, even in the database layer or other layers of the system that are not part of the consensus critical code, can have uh, an effect on the operation of consensus, even though the rules are followed accurately uh, by all nodes. So, uh, a block with more than 1,024 transactions were perfectly valid by the rules of consensus. Um, but none of the clients, uh, none of the old clients running Berkeley DB could actually handle it because of a bug in Berkeley DB, and, and as a result, causing this chain fork.